Yo, what's happening you guys? Long time no see or no hear, but I'm back with a brand new video and in today's video I kind of wanted to go over the sort of good things and bad things about having a mid-drive e-bike over a hub drive e-bike and straight off the bat I would say that while it's been good to me so far I haven't had to take care of anything which happens to do with the internals so I can't really speak for any kind of maintenance or anything and I'm hoping I don't have to deal with that anytime soon because it looks really maddening to deal with not so much as the hub drive as I've gotten a little bit more used to that but either way let's get straight down to it so so far with my usage I discovered that by riding uphills has been more of a pro with this thing although your weight come into a great factor in this equation just because if you're using the throttle like I've got here but most people who end up with a mid-drive that be it either one that's already built into the bike or one that's a do-it-yourself kit like mine here but I try always to opt for a full th uh, full twist throttle rather than a thumb although I do lose like my one other handlebar here but besides the, uh, the point um, you definitely do not want to be full throttling yourself up a hill just because of the instant force going uphill that is going to immediately get the gears working on its own versus if you pedal it gradually carries you up the hill as it should now for me i kind of had to differentiate of when i use the full throttle versus when i had to pedal with the gears being in use and going up steep inclines happens to be more or less of a natural ease yourself into going up the hill rather than using the full twist throttle which automatically powers the thing which could lead to the chain ring being over pressured which will lead to the chain derailing off the chain ring which I have to say has happened to me a lot of times but I've managed to mitigate that by learning how to use it properly depending on the situation I'm in so first things first when it comes to powering up it is always recommended to be in your first or second top gear I prefer to be in the top gear just so in that way it's not putting too much stress and another complex thing too I've learned with these uh, cassettes is that fortunately mine is a cassette not a freewheel I had to actually redesign my gear ratio here so instead of being like the regular nine gears I had to make sure I put a uh, 13 gear mixed in with a nine gear hub in here or a chain gear just because the bigger the I can't put my mine on what they call these except for gear cogs there we're called gear cogs so i had to make sure that the gear cogs were about similar size because the actual big one that comes with the 13 gear cog drive was too much and it basically just grinded against this part right here so i had to swap that big ring out and just keep the default ring that was actually part of it and just take the from this part all the way down to here off with it I'm not quite sure which part of this is actually connected to the main one but I know that there's like three or four of them that are connected to one big uh, gear cog drive and then I had to kind of use the extras to let's say for example this one here is my second smallest I don't really use my last nine gear train I use this one right here so in that way if I'm ever like the forward inertia if I'm going really fast I can switch this uh, to this gear to benefit from the last gear to go the fastest so I had to actually redesigned my gear train here to better make use of going faster speeds and then when I'm on a long straightaway I would switch to this gear right here to continue that forward momentum now this is where if you're wanting to go really fast on the e-bike this is where having a hub drive will benefit you best rather than going for a mid drive because hub drives, depending if you, like, I'll be going for a 3,000 watt here soon in the future. I just don't have it right now. But the last one I did have was a 2,000 watt. And the speed on that, depending on the controller and the battery, was what got me up to, what is it, 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour? But this, I can only maybe do 37, 40 miles per hour, maybe less. Because of my weight is a big factor in this. But I will say my experience has been a very, there are some learning curves to this bike, although I hope to actually have learned more about this in the time that I've had it to help mitigate the cause and effect of what may contribute to the gears inside the mid-drive to uh, deteriorate slash grind itself out, which I don't want to have happen. But uh, so far, it's been a champion. I never had to maintenance it so far. So I can't really give my opinions or thoughts on how it is to maintain these things, except for if you notice that there's some extreme grindage, stop uh, using it immediately, like such as 
throw your clutch on immediately cuts power off to the motor so that's where you have to learn to take it easy especially in my case I've had to but uh, learning how to what to do and what not to has been the best benefit of learning how to not stress my mid drive out so much and that's where I say the pros and cons to having a mid drive over a hub drive is if you want to go fast get yourself a hub drive but if you want to take hills with ease that's where a mid drive will help you although a hub drive will help you with that but this is a little more exclusive unfortunately because of the kind of mid drive that i do have it's really d uh, difficult to look for a specific chain ring the first one i got was a 36 tooth it was actually way smaller than i thought it was but unfortunately the holes which i would have to screw into it to replace this was a few millimeters off course so i had to kind of send that back to amazon and i've just been dealing with the default chain ring ever since so I just had to fix up my uh, gear cog drive here to make it uh, work better. And so far, I've had little issues with it. So actually, I haven't heard my chain ring or the gears inside the mid-drive grind as much ever since I've opted with this kind of setup. And yes, there are different weird ways to actually set this up. I never quite realized until I started doing it for myself as well as watching some videos. I'm going to get on the road and do some riding and instead of sitting here randomly but i figured it'd be a lot easier to talk about this right here right now versus on the way where i usually tend to forget things as soon as they're on my mind so without further ado let's get on the road and do some riding My specific mid drive here with this particular display, there's a variety of them, but I just chose to go with this one. There are a choice between using five gears, which won't guarantee you anything faster than 40 kilometers or maybe like 20 or 30 miles per hour or something like that. But I've enabled the four extra gears, which gives me up to nine, but I only go through the eight just because I feel like, I don't know, eight, nine, eight is kind of like, feels like the top maximum versus uh, nine doesn't seem all that much. So it just seems like it does the same speed no matter what. <laughs> so I did have a list of what I need to come downtown for because I have not been out for the past couple of days. And to go where I want to get my stuff at is a bit more of like, uh, do I want to go here or do I want to go there? So yeah, it's been a very fun learning experience to know how this mid drive works versus a hub drive, which I cannot wait to get my hub drive back, which will probably be later on this month. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, using a full twist throttle on surfaces like this are more ideal than going uphill. Unless you've already got forward inertia going up, and in that case you're better off just using your feet to pedal. Okay, there we go. So for example, I'll be going up this way, but instead of using my full throttle, I'll be using my pedals. Just because it seems more natural to go up an incline pedaling than it is full throttling. Alright. So inclines like this are ideal for using pedal only. Whereas using the throttle will likely cause chain derailment slash gear grinding in the mid-drive which pains me to even hear how such a thing goes on. As always, I'm gonna cut it here and I'll see you guys on the next side. So while I concluded my business up at the uh, theater, Polson Park area, um, there's a trick I've been wanting to inquire about, which I've seen a lot of people do on YouTube, but uh, haven't quite learned to establish what the name of it is, but it's basically when you put your, uh, your leg down, I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration here. So with my leg down and then basically spinning the wheel and going in circles but while I'm on the bike. So if you can help a brother out of how to do something like that or what video to refer me to and how to do that, that would be super duper because I'm a part of this uh, group 
where a bunch of us guys get together on scooters and e-bikes and apart from doing a tire burnout I know a large factor has to do with my weight but if, I guess it's due to weight distribution but it'd be awesome to know that trick I may already have it figured out by the time you guys help me but the help is appreciated nonetheless I haven't learned how to wheel it yet just because again I know my weight is a factor but it's all a matter of balance too but I also am not the richest person in the world which means if anything goes wrong and I know it has to do with this having to struggle to keep my butt up and being able to uh, strike the right balance and wheeling and stuff like a lot of people say it's easy just the most logical thing to do is to have this brake right here be the rear and as you're pedaling up you're basically balancing yourself so you're not the rear brake helps you from going back completely while you're still trying to wheelie and keeping the front wheel basing up that much I do know but the discipline to know how to do that is another thing of its own now that I've gotten up there what I need to get done I guess all that matters most now is to check on my list and uh, oh and another thing I find irritable too I don't know if you guys can relate but when using a GoPro I noticed that my GoPro has been asking me to do this update to the GoPro app or setting it manually I had to like turn the GoPro off turn it back on hit the GoPro or set the uh, set the time and date manually or whatever which is a really big pain in my butt and uh, I had to make sure I take my GoPro accessory out from my mic so then that way I'm not recording because a lot of times I just on the go I just been hitting the record button but it has not recorded any audio and there's been a few clips where I where audio would have been definitely beneficial to have at the time but I just kind of accepted it as I don't know what to do better next time it becomes a pain knowing that if my commentary is even being recorded so if you guys all can relate to that um, I'm not sure if there's an actual fix for it because it's every time I, I turn my GoPro off and I turn it back on, it's not because I take the battery out. I only take the battery out so that way it doesn't like use any passive energy, which I think GoPros do. But it might make me opt out of a GoPro and go for something else, but or go for the newer line of GoPros. But yeah, it's just really annoying. And uh, I'm not sure what the date and time has to do with the effect, as long as I know what time of day it is actually, versus what the GoPro will say will. But yeah, just another thing. To, annoying thing to add so as we move along I kind of want to take the drone up for that kind of moment you know all right now to wait for oh no never mind I guess I'm in I'm just in time get going oh. <sighs> Time to go to that wholesale club and give me some good host ass tea. Man, that is beautiful. Damn, I didn't realize they finished this off, but it looks immaculate. I see they redesigned this path too, which is awesome. Oh. Alright, well, this is where I cut this video off. Unfortunately, my visit in that shop was very short, sweet, and simple. Man, that carbon tax is really making itself known in these stores, I tell you. <laughs> for instance, there's uh, a particular item I like to go for, which is now $2 more than I originally paid for it. I'll be damned. And secondly, this GoPro is getting real bad, so unless I know how to link this thing up to my phone, that freaking setting the time and day is becoming more consistent. And it's getting kind of worrisome because it's also getting very annoying. So this means I need to offer a different action camera or go for a newer generation GoPro, which might be the 11 or 12. But that's easier said than done at this point. Now I'm going to go for a subway. And your boy's going to head her home to conclude this video for the day. Yeah, I'm hoping over the coming days and weeks and months I'll have something more interesting to come up with and talk about. <sighs> so, well, another yet short, sweet, and simple visit. Hey, it was already done by the time I got there. Oh, those guys are on fire. Anyway, it's time to conclude this video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed with whatever rambling topic I can come up with and. 
some part of me hopes that I got off my chest what I need to for today but uh, it's time to head home but uh, yeah hopefully I'll have something a little more interesting to talk about and you know have better places to go and stuff because this right now is kind of like a it's kind of messed up but you know I gotta make up to a gotta make the best out of it what I can so I'm hoping that in the later part of this uh, month I'll have that blue bike up and going so let's see how that goes so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed feel free to get yourself subscribed hit that post notification bell so you never miss out on a future video until next time have yourselves a good day night wherever you're watching me from peace Shorty.